Hello and welcome. Today we will discuss about stress strain curve for mild steel. The importance of this curve is in design of steel structure, is in design of RCC structure and whenever we need to use steel as a structural member, we need to study the behavior of steel first to use this data in design process. Now typical stress strain curve of mild steel under tension may look like this. However, this curve is not to the scale. Now this curve is effect of tension on mild steel specimen and here the stress is plotted on y axis and strain is plotted on x axis. Now let us see how one can plot this curve. This is standard test specimen one can use for tension test on mild steel bar. Here we are observing the behavior of mild steel within this gauge length. This portion goes under grips of universal testing machine, also this and then tensile force is applied on this specimen. The actual specimen may look like this. Now let us see how we can plot this curve. To plot this curve we need stress and strain. To calculate stress and strain, we need to observe some data while testing the specimen under tension. Now here, strain is nothing but change in length upon original length. Stress is force upon cross sectional area. Now when we are doing this test, the original length once noted is not going to change and the cross sectional area once noted is not going to change. As we are increasing the force gradually after application of force there will be gradual change in length of specimen. Now once we know the values of change in length and respective force at that particular change in length we can calculate stress and strain and point to point we can start drawing this curve. Now let us understand the various points and regions on this curve. The first region is elastic limit and this elastic limit is within this portion O to A and this triangular portion. Now what is this elastic limit? In this limit if due to action of force there is change in length of specimen and once we remove that external force the material has its ability to regain its original length and within this region this can be possible. Now point A is known as proportional limit and if you observe the nature of graph within O to A is inclined straight line which indicates that within this elastic limit the stress is directly proportional to strain and that is nothing but Hooke's law. If we still further go on increasing load we get point B which is yield point. Now, a point and B point are closer to each other. At point B, we can note yield stress and B to C is nothing but plastic zone or plastic limit. Now within this region, if we further go on increasing load, if we further go on increasing stress acting on member, 
the deformation is permanent and the material will not regain its original length. This happens till point C. If we further go on increasing applied load from point C to D, we can note that material starts developing some resistance to force which is stress and within this region we can observe there is significant increase in stress as well as strain. At point D we can observe maximum ultimate stress. If we further go on increasing applied load we can observe that stress is reducing and this happens till point E. Now this region is known as necking zone. Within this region from point D onwards there is reduction in area of specimen start taking place and material is reducing its area at one particular point and at point E it fails into two separate pieces. Now this was the actual specimen that we are using for tension test and this is the specimen after failure at point E. Now here you can observe that there is reduction in this area and material fails into two pieces, two separate pieces. Now there is this specific type of failure, the formation of failure which is cup and cone type of failure. We can observe these surfaces, there is this cone and then there is this cup and this also shows that the material is ductile. This behavior can be observed specifically in ductile material. Now, let us see what are different strains at different particular points. As this graph is not to the scale and to get the idea about actual curve, let us observe strain at point A at this particular point we are having 0.00125. Strain at point C is 0.015. Now you can you can now you can observe there is significant change in strains of these two point A to C. Strain at point D here at this point is 0.2 and strain at point E is 0.25. At breaking point, at fracture point E, we can observe percentage of strain 20 to 23 percent. Now here, you can see this dotted curve C to E dash. If we use the actual cross sectional area at narrow part of neck, then this curve can be plotted. This curve is known as true stress strain curve. Now what is important to note in this curve is yield stress which is at yield point B and ultimate stress which is at point D. Now how we can use these two stresses in design process and what is actual use of this stress strain curve, I can give you a simple example. While designing a tension member, we can use this. As we know that yield stress is a point, is a stress beyond which if we further go on increasing tensile forces on member, there will be permanent deformation in member. And hence, for designing tension member, if I need to calculate design strength of member due to yielding of gross section, then in that formulation I have to use Fy. As yielding is there, I am observing yielding there, so we need to use yield stress. Similarly, if I am checking member for rupture, if I need to design member, tension member, I need to figure out 
design strength of member due to rupture of critical section i need to use ultimate stress and these are the references from is 800 2007 class number 6.2 and 6.3 and this is actually use of stress strain curve for more information about stress strain curve i am suggesting these books and references thank you